Hey you guys, so the lighting's going to be wacky because we need to be on my counter again today because there's lots of stuff happening over here. Um, so thanks for coming and we're doing, uh, today is this, tonight is the start of Rosh Hashanah and uh, about nine years ago we met our neighbors and they were Jewish and we started having dinner together regularly and so every year since then I've started making a Rosh Hashanah meal. I'm trying to get better lighting here. There we go, that's a little better. So um, some of the traditional foods, uh, I had to look them up. I didn't really know anything about it. Um, but one of them is challah bread. Now, challah bread is for every Shabbat, so that's on Saturdays. But uh, Rosh Hashanah, it's round, and that signifies uh, new beginnings because Rosh Hashanah is the new year. Um, so I also pulled up, because we're going to use a few of these foods, um, apples and honey. Um, apples and honey are, that's Rosh Hashanah. Um, obviously because harvest, apples would be happening, but, uh, let's see here. It said, honey is sweet, perfect for symbolizing the new year, and apple is a sign of the harvest, and so it's traditional to drip the, drip, dip the honey into the, hello, apple into the honey. Okay, new fruit, um, is the seasonal produce that hasn't been tasted since the start of the season. And tip, uh, a very typical one is pomegranate, and you would see a lot of pomegranate in the designs of the um, temple and all that. And then the round challah um, con symbolizes continuity. Honey cake for sweet, positive upcoming year, which I have in the fridge for tomorrow. And dates are another, um, let me see what it says here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm reading and it's not making sense here. So, because I'm, I, my brain is going. Also, leeks, chard, and spinach, fish heads, which we're not going to do today or ever. Just letting you know. So, there's lots of really neat symbolic foods. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to do a crostini. So, we're going to do like a modern appetizery. Carrots is another one. Kind of a take that incorporates a bunch of these foods. So I'm gonna turn you around. Actually, first I'm gonna, yeah, let me do that. Okay, so I already have the bread sliced. It's a baguette. I did oil on it, salt and pepper, and then you put it in the oven for one minute on broil, and then you take it out and you flip them and do the other side for one minute on broil. Also what we have here is some thin sliced apples some uh, walnuts chopped, a tiny bit of pomegranate because the pomegranates I bought were terrible. You can tell there's hardly any red on them. And I didn't have time to go back out. Goat cheese and garlic. So what we're going to do with the garlic, which is, oh, and honey, which is really cool, is once it comes out and it's toasted, you just rub that raw garlic on it and it gives it that yummy garlicky bread kind of a flavor without doing garlic bread with actual garlic still on it. It also says to use crushed red, red pepper flakes. I may try that on a couple, but I won't do it on all of them. Um, the other thing, while I'm waiting for that bread to do its thing, is we have our challah bread almost ready to go, and then we're gonna shape it. I have two different batches going because I need it for two different meals. So um, let me just check this bread because I don't wanna burn it. So how's everybody doing today? <clears throat> oh, let's give it another second here. It's uh the bread is the bread is a uh, you need to be present when you're making it. Um <clears throat> because you have to come and punch it down every 20 minutes and I'll show little clips. I've done a couple of little clips of what I was doing, but you make the dough. I just did it in my kitchen make it kitchen aid and then knead it for 10 minutes. And um, don't add too much flour, just like a little brush of flour on it every time it just gets a little too sticky. And then you put it in a bowl with oil. And like we said last week, well, you know, while I'm waiting for this, why don't I just turn you around so you're not staring at apples. Like I said last week, the oil in the bowl is super important because it helps the dough to rise. If the dough doesn't have that uh, slippery kind of effect, it won't be able to rise. It'll get stuck to the bowl. So well-coated uh, bowl for that. Let me check this bread. Hmm. It's not toasting up super quickly. I was afraid I was gonna burn it. So we'll give it another minute. Um, and then we're gonna shape this. So you can, you've probably seen traditional where it's this long braided, that's for um, Shabbat or Sabbath on Saturdays. 
and you can and whenever they want to eat it really but round is what we're going to do today and there's a few different ways you can do it um i have a particular way that i like um but i saw another one that was super easy that i think i'm going to show you because this makes two loaves each batch so i think i'll show you that one too so that if you're not really into the braiding part maybe you can do this little twisty one that was pretty easy so let's see on this bread come on bread almost there all right so does anybody else do anything for Rosh Hashanah I'm excited I'm well <laughs> kind of excited if anybody has any tips I started to do some shallots garlic and red wine and you're supposed to reduce the red wine but I cannot get this cork out of the bottle and now it's all broken and I can see a piece of cork floating in here and I've tried all kinds of things, but I cannot get it out. I don't know what to do. So if anybody has any tips on that, that would be super helpful. Um, I've gone online and done all the tricks that they talk about, but it's not worked. So I'm not exactly sure how to move forward with that. So let me put this pad there. I had my garlic all ready to go, and I went to find it, and I accidentally threw it out with the apple scraps. So there we go. Okay. So, let me turn you back around. Maybe. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this here. And you want to do this garlic thing, you know, relatively soon after you get it out. So I just take this little piece of garlic, and I'm just going to... I'm a little afraid. I'm going to get a fork, actually, because it's hot, so I don't want to hurt myself. Just to hold it in place. And you just rub it over the top. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. And they're going to cool pretty quickly. Now, I made the mistake that they had this um, sourdough version of baguette, and it looked so yummy. But I'm finding out that might be wasn't the best plan because it's full of massive holes. I didn't think about that. So it'll make it a little tricky to keep all the stuff on it. But yeah, it's pretty simple. You just rub the garlic and it's gonna have this amazing garlic flavor. And you're not eating the chunks of garlic, although it is sort of getting smaller as I go. So it is leaving some behind, I suppose. But this fork was a perfect idea. I was really like, oh, it's gonna burn me. But you can see, super, super easy. So it's just salt, pepper, olive oil. I think olive oil has a meaning too, but I couldn't find it. So maybe someone else who knows will be able to tell me what the meaning of olive oil is. Um, oh, that one's gone. Let me get the other half here. If there's a specific meaning specifically to Rosh Hashanah. I mean, I know what oil symbolizes in general, but oh, this one's breaking apart, making it a little harder to do. It's falling to pieces, this one. Not sure why that's doing that, but okay chunk on there. Nobody wants a big, well, some people like a big chunk of raw. Okay, so now we're going to rinse that off our hands. Oh, our bread is ready to shape, so we'll just finish this up real quick. Okay, so the goat cheese I just took out. <clears throat> now I'm not going to do all of these because you'll get the point very quickly and we'll get to the bread. So you put a little goat cheese on there. I have a friend who, um, their mom makes, they have goats and they make the goat cheese. And that would be delicious on here too. She puts like herbs and stuff in it. So yummy. Okay, just do one more just so you can see. Okay, and then I can finish these after. Okay, that one didn't get too much cheese. So I'm going to just take a little off of this one that got too much. The bread's a little hot, so it's, uh. Making it a little trickier. Okay, so then we'll put apple, and I might, I think I'm just going to put one. We'll put the round side with the round side, put a little sprinkle. You know what? I'm going to put this sprinkle underneath, actually, because I think that makes more sense, even though the recipe said to put it on top. So put a sprinkle underneath. And I, I feel like walnuts has a meaning too, or nuts in general, but I also can't remember that. 
and then you put a little bit of pomegranate and since that's all I have that works out well and then these pomegranates are terrible so disappointing it's hard to get them on time for Rosh Hashanah I've found and figs I tried to find figs and I couldn't get those so just take this honey this is my uncle's honey from his bees just put it on a spoon and we're just gonna drizzle it now I'm not a big fan of honey but I'm gonna taste this because I love you and I want you to know if it's any good just put a tiny bit more okay and we'll come back to that and finish these after we're done but let's see let's see if this is any good hi Casey all right going in mmm that's a nice treat actually the crunch of the bread it's all crunchy it's all this beautiful crunch with this nice thin layer of Cheese in the middle. I have honey literally dripping off me everywhere. <laughs> I don't really like honey, but anyway, that's what's going on with that. I didn't put the pepper. It makes me nervous. All right. Sorry, staring at my light bulb. Okay. That was a lot to chew. <laughs> All right, so let me just quickly just go over this again. I've already cleaned it a couple times, but just to clean it one more. All right, so that is the timer to punch down our bread one more time. So let me just show you that actually. You can see it's risen and it's really just punching it down like this with your fingers. That's it. I have two batches going. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover this one because we're ready for this one. And I'm gonna set the timer for 20 more minutes. Okay, now, uh, you don't really, flip you around, sorry for the uh, um, seasickness there. There's enough oil on this that you don't really need to butter your, I mean flour your counter. So I'm just gonna dump that out, get rid of my bowl. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it in half. And I like to use my counter handy scraper. I'm going to set one half aside. And then I'm just going to turn this into, you know, a log-ish because I want to get some pieces out of it that are generally the same size. So I'm going to cut that in half. And then I'm going to cut it into fours. So you cut it in half again and cut each half in half. We want eight slices, or eight, whatever, um, braid pieces. Okay, this is a little. Okay, so we'll set these aside, and we're just gonna roll them out. Oh, you know what, I lied. We don't want eight, we want four. I watched a video the other day with a guy doing eight and it messed me up a little bit. So let me just get this kind of kneaded back in together. I don't want to do it too much. I don't want to lose out. Oh, a little bit greasier than usual. I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> I don't usually do that, but I'm having a hard time rolling it. Okay. Literally never had trouble doing this. Like I said last week, if it's live, it, that's when it'll go wrong. Okay, I don't know why it's not cooperating, but you want longish tubes here and it's uh, not giving me what I want. So you know what I think I'm gonna do? Improvise, I'm gonna get the flour back out. Did I put it away? Oh, <laughs> camera's on it. All right, let's try that again. Let me put a little flour just to absorb some of this oil. That might be part of the problem. Not a lot, you don't want to dry it out. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. I'm just trying to piece these two pieces back together. I shouldn't have done that to begin with, but 
Okay, now it's working. Yep, that's much better. Okay. Get a little of that flower. All right. You want to try to start from the center when you're rolling. I know this looks like a total disaster what I'm doing, but and work it out or else you're going to end up with wonky shape. So work from the center out. Okay, and put this back together and get a little flower for that one. You don't need a ton of flower, just whatever's on the counter is fine. I made 35 or 36 loaves of this last year and I did not have any of this trouble. <laughs> trouble. But I will say, since we're saying that, um, this bread actually freezes really well. I did the 36 loaves uh, ahead of time and I put them in one of those vacuum seal thingies and they fit perfectly in the pouches. Well, I had like the long bag of it and vacuum sealed them and threw them in the freezer and it was great. Okay, so let me tell you what I just did. So I put two one way, two the other, horizontal, vertical. Two on top, but I'm gonna lift this one, lift this one, and we're gonna make like a lattice, right? So because this is on top on the bottom, we're gonna lift this one and the top one and put it on top on that one, okay? So then you're going to, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, so you go over, take one and put it over the top of the other, take one and put it over the top of the other, take one, over the top, one over the top. Now we have this, the beginning of this round braid. We're gonna go the other direction because you can't go over the top of this one. So it's gonna make more sense that you're gonna go this way. So you're gonna go over the top of this one, over the top of this one, over the top of this one, over the top of this one. We still have more. So we go back the other direction and you just keep going round and round until you don't have more to go around. So this will just go over a little bit and then I tuck it under. Go over a little bit, tuck it under. Okay, this goes over, tuck it under. This goes over, tuck it under. And then you have a nice round. Now that looks tiny, but it's gonna rise. And so all of that's tucked underneath and I'm just gonna put it on my pan here. And we're just gonna put a little more flour because that did make a big difference. And I'm gonna just show you the other shape real quick. Unless you'd like to just see that shape again, which I could do easily. Okay. But you can always go back and watch that shape again, actually, so I think I am gonna show you the other one. Piece of walnut. All right, let me cut this in half. Now this one, you're just cutting in half. I just saw someone do this, so I figured if the braiding is too overwhelming for you and you're like, okay, no, that's, I'll never make this because it's too, that's crazy, too much. The whole point is just to make sure it's round instead of long, a long braid. So this one, you take just half and half and make a nice long, get that out of the way. This one needs to be stretched there. And you can feel where it's thicker and where it's thinner so that you can start, you know, working the dough somewhere else so that it gets, you know, kind of even. All right, we'll put this one here. Get a little of that flour. Okay. All right, so, anyway, so as far as that freezer stuff, so when you take it out of the freezer, um, you're just going to put it on a cheat tray and just warm it up and it's good to go. All right, here's the other shape. Super simple. Just kind of uh, pinch them on the end and just sort of coil them around each other. That's it. Coil, coil, right? Okay, so now it's pinched on the end, pinched on the end and coiled. And then you just simply Spin it in on itself. 
And that side's not as pretty, so I'm gonna tuck that in a little more. And that's it. So now you have another one that still looks like you did a really kind of neat braid on it, but it's just a coil. So we'll put that in the middle. I mean, put it on the tray. Okay, let me just clean my hands real quick. There for three to see. All right. Um, and then this gets covered with a damp towel. And I have that damp towel that I've been using already, so I'm just going to use the same one. And you let it rise for 30 minutes. But I just wanted you to be able to see these a little more. That's kind of... All right, so this is the one where we really braided it, and this is the one where we just coiled it. They both look beautiful, and once they rise, you're gonna um, do an egg wash, and you can put sesame or poppy seeds, or you can leave it plain. So either way works well. Hi, Brittany, good to see you. Hope you're feeling better today. Um, so there's that, and this dough will be ready to punch down one more time and shape uh, pretty soon. So we have the crostini, right here and we have the bread so I'll show you guys the finished product when it's all done um, and well I wish I could let you taste it because I'm told and now this is not my recipe I found this recipe but I'm told this is better than the Jewish bakery where everybody gets their stuff so this recipe is great I will post it below for you so easy to make it does take a little time though so be, be patient but it's it's really delicious and really I don't know if you've had challah bread before where it's just like ugh, dry and crumbly. This is not like this like really luscious bread. And you would, tra just traditionally on Rosh Hashanah, you would dip it in honey as well. So that's that. But um, I think that's everything for today, and we will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.